Hello viewer, welcome to Hope Channel Kenya. Welcome to Testimony Time. And uh, our guest today is Pastor Dr. David Odiambo. Pastor Odiambo. Yes, Sister Edwina. Uh, uh, are you a pastor of a church? Or what do you do? Well, currently I'm um, lecturing. Uh, where? Uh, at Adventist University of Africa. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, I'm what? in the Department of uh, Theology, uh -huh. specifically in the New Testament, uh -huh. uh, teaching Greek and New Testament. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Pastor will share a brief word of God mm -hmm. with us before we go on in the testimony, but Pastor, pray for us before we go on. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful this day again to see your goodness and love for our lives and for everyone whom we come across. We're here, Lord, for one reason, that you alone be glorified mm. in our lives. Mm. As we begin this season, pray that you bless us, allow your spirit mm. to direct our busyness today. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we go on, my name is Edwina. Mm-hmm. Ombado. Yes, my yes. sister, thank you for the opportunity. Mm. Uh, welcome you viewer again for this moment. We want to hear the word of God. And uh, I want to draw you to attention to one thing that I know is common to all of us, and that is encounters. But today, not human encounter, not any other encounter, but divine encounter. Amen. And I'm inviting you to a very common text that we have read but seeking only to highlight the aspect of divine encounter. This is Genesis 18, and I'm reading only two verses. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him mm. in the plains of Mare, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, mm -hmm. and he bowed himself towards the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Well, before I enter into the text, which is essentially talking about Abraham, he doesn't mention him, but if you get to read Genesis 17, we are told that the Lord appeared to Abraham. And two things, or, th or probably three things, seem to be highlighted. One, it's the time when the Lord appeared. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the Lord appeared in the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. We could relate this probably midday, and I guess midday at times in normal circumstances, people are beginning to, be, uh, to get sluggish, you know, after starting off on a high note. Midday, there is that sluggishness. But the Bible says at mid or at the heat of the day, well, this in Palestine, we could locate it at any time. But probably for any viewer, the heat of the day could be at most high in the middle of the day. And the Bible says that the Lord appeared to him at that particular time. And then the Bible says that he was seated in the tent, uh, in the tent door. Mm. I'm seeing Abraham seated outside his house in the normal circumstances of his life. And that is the moment the Bible says that when he lifted up his eyes, and he says he saw three men. Now, the narrator is the one telling us the, the circumstances. We still don't see Abraham coming out through the story. But the, Bible, the narrator is telling us that he, referring to Abraham, lifted up his eyes and he tells us he saw three men standing by. And the, Bible, the narrator says that he ran and fell down and bowed. Mm -hmm. Now, when Abraham comes out in the story, which has just been told about him, but when he begins now to enter the story, the Bible says, he said, my Lord. Mm. And this is the reason why I'm saying a divine encounter. Mm. Abraham himself highlights an encounter with the Lord. Now, going back to the beginning of the story, the Bible says, in the heat of the day. And the Bible says, just in the ordinary place of his homestead. I don't know about you, but I know that each day people have the deep desire, as the psalmist says, that our hearts continually yearn for the Lord. And one theologian says that until only we find the Lord, 
we find peace. Mm. Meaning in every human being, there is this desire to meet the Lord. Amen. The fear that I want to address this day is how we have expected to encounter the Lord. The times upon us, as the Bible says, are such perilous that people look for these dramatic moments, look for these very extraordinary supernatural moments mm. to encounter the Lord. Mm. But viewer, I want to highlight two things of divine encounter in the story. One, in the heat of the day, outside his tent, and I begin to see that the Lord will always operate in very ordinary circumstances. Mm. The ordinary circumstances of our lives are actually pitted for us to encounter God. But how often people wait for the dramatic and supernatural moments to see the Lord. You know, I've read a story of one man who left his home and went into a far country because he was told that in the far country there was treasure. Only to reach the far country and the people that he found there, he found them packing also to come where he had just left. Mm -hmm. And they told him, we actually are going to where you are coming from, mm. for we also have learned that where you dwell is where the treasure is. Wow. This is the reason why I'm saying the divine encounter, as the Bible refers to the things of God as precious or as treasure that a man finds and sells off all his wealth and goes to buy a land, Jesus speaks of in a parable. In the same manner, the Lord's encounter, the Lord's revelation, the Lord's manifestation, always, and I want to say always, is found in ordinary circumstances. Mm. Just the normal events of life. The problem that has happened that the far that human beings have been around, we have lost our sensitivity. We have lost the ability to be able to tap in in the divine operations that are around us. Mm. And that's why for those who are believers, I just want to encourage you in your simple life of prayer. Mm. You could not be th seeing anything moving around you, but I want to tell you that those prayer that you pray each day and not in vain. Mm. If you only take time and be patient, the Lord will definitely reveal himself in those very ordinary moments of your prayer time. Mm. The second thing that I also see is that when the Bible says that when Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw three men that stood by him, you know, up to this time in the biblical narrative, at least if we would assume a chronological uh, follow-up of events, up to this time, mm. God has not revealed himself in this manner. Mm. In three men, this is the first time we are encountering this kind of operation or revelation of God. Mm. And I'm beginning to see one thing again about divine encounter, mm. that it's always original. Mm. In the sense, God desires to come to you in your unique circumstances. Mm. Don't look over your shoulders of how God has revealed or how God has worked in the life of somebody near you or even your neighbor mm. and begin to feel depressed mm. that if he doesn't operate the way he operated mm. in my neighbor's life, mm. then he is not coming to me. Mm. I'm saying in the three men, no else or definitely after this do we see God operating in this manner. Mm. I'm convicted that God is operating in very original manner. Mm. For every individual, for every circumstance, he fits in just as the need Amen. is. I want you to be encouraged this day. Mm. I don't know what you're going through. You could be just waiting for the Lord to come through for you in your life. Or even you could be thinking that maybe your time of salvation is not yet because you would be imagine that if God is to call you, he has to call you like your father or your mother or probably your neighbor mm -hmm. or even the way it happens in the church that you go to. Okay. I come to tell you that no, God wants to come to you in your new, unique way. Amen. In the circumstances of your life, God is operating. The Bible says in Acts 17, mm. 26 and 27, if you read that the, we, have been, we have all been created out of one man, and it says that the Lord appoints our time in mm. the places we dwell in. Amen. And the author says that, at the Luke says at the end of that verse 27, that he has designated us the places where we dwell, mm. 
mm. because he would desire that we may find him even though he's not far from us mm. even by just grasping out for him okay so god is just there where you are mm. and he just desires that you may keep fellowship with him if you have found him but if you've not found him probably you may begin to find him for the bible says for those who turn unto him he becomes a strong tower for them amen he calls unto every man the bible says in the depth of our existence the lord has placed eternity amen. the book of ecclesiastic 3:12 the lord desires every person so many people have wondered why jesus whom we wait upon has not appeared to all men at this time in the sense of his second coming mm. but the bible says that he desires no one to get lost amen. he desires that all may come to repentance that they may be saved amen i want to believe that if you have not opened your heart to god probably wondering that divine encounters are mysterious events and you are waiting for one as i see in the world today people trying to concoct some divine manifestations in every way i want to tell you that the lord is near you mm. paul says you don't have to go anywhere above or below the earth the word is close to you on your mouth mm. if you believe in your heart and make a confession with your mouth that jesus is lord you may have just met the lord at that time amen may god bless you for this day amen 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 yes my sister amen let's pray mm -hmm. heavenly father we thank you for this message of salvation we thank you lord our god that you you uniquely mm -hmm. meet each one of us at the point of our need amen. that you appear to us just like you appear only to us amen and so father we thank you may we mm -hmm. encounter you mm -hmm. each one of us mm -hmm. may that viewer encounter you mm -hmm. that viewer was just about to give up mm -hmm. that viewer heavenly father was in pain that viewer who is confused that viewer whose family is falling apart mm -hmm. may they encounter you mm -hmm. may each one of us give surrender our lives to you mm -hmm. and be filled with your holy spirit and mm. serve you mm -hmm. while there's yet time for we pray in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. and dear viewers we'll take a short break and then we'll go into pastor diambo's testimony uh, god bless you don't go away stay with us amen 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 Thank you very much, Pastor, for that message from the Lord. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah, Amen. I have been blessed, and I believe that uh, our viewer God. is blessed Praise as I am. God. Praise and I would God. like a special encounter each day Amen. with the Lord every moment. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so now, Pastor, mm -hmm. you know, um, our viewer mm -hmm. and members mm -hmm. um, also get curious about our pastors mm -hmm. and, uh, are you born again have you met christ hmm. have you had that encounter mm -hmm. with the lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you sister edwina I, I actually intended uh knowing that i was going to give a testimony i thought of that message mm -hmm. uh, because uh, i guess my testimony is about an encounter mm. And uh, for sure, I have encountered Jesus. Amen. Well, there are several vocabulary people would want to use about that kind of experience. Mm. Some will call it born again, and I have no biblical. problem. Biblical. Yes. I don't have a problem with that. It's mm. biblical it indeed. Biblical. Yeah, Jesus mm. tells Nicodemus that you have to be born you again. You must be born you again. You must be born. I like that mm. qualification. Yeah. yeah. You must be born again. So yes. for sure, that is what I could call myself to have gone through. Mm. In meeting Paul Jesus. had an encounter. Paul had an encounter. And you can see again, look at those encounters. The woman, the Samaritan woman, yeah, had, had an, an encounter. encounter. You don't see any similarities no. in those encounters. Peter had an encounter. Peter had an encounter. You mm. see that uniqueness. You Amen. see, you know, the Bible, uh, wide and large as it is, you mm. see that there is nothing that looks the mm. same. God comes to every person according to their unique circumstances and i believe even unique personality mm. i would guess probably that's why we have the four gospels james and john we don't we, even see their encounter mm -hmm, but we don't, they change we see the testimony. their lives we change. see the testimony amen we see the testimony mm. probably that's why john later on the revelator could say that 
um, the song of the redeemed mm. was one that no else could, no one else could sing mm. because indeed it's again impossible. that uniqueness Amen. that uniqueness mm. you have to come out with a song mm. when you get that encounter Amen. it's true Amen. so uh, back to your question i have encountered jesus Amen. i Amen. have encountered jesus mm. and for me this is not religious Amen. Even as a pastor, I want to say that because at times, you know, people would imagine that, okay, you're just looped in because you're a pastor. Mm. But I think my pastor, my pastoral calling is an outflow of mm. the encounter. Amen. Yeah. I like you mm -hmm. eliminating that mm -hmm. word religion mm -hmm. because Mm. Every religion is a religion. Correct, correct. And mm. then, and, but and this is a personal and, uh, encounter. Yes, and and, and and the issue of encounter could again also be uh, mm, associated with any religion. Yeah. Because uh, essentially today we know that mm, uh, people are rushing for encounters in different manner. Mm -hmm. In some occult, mm -hmm. some are doing them in um, even in witchcrafts. Mm -hmm. They have encounters. Uh, because, you know, the heart of a man has this deep desire of this, uh, I call it mystery. You know, you go to India, they, they, they have a way of getting into the big soul. They talk about that. And um, that, that's an encounter. But for we, uh, I believe for me, it's a personal encounter with a person, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So mm -hmm. now because of time, we'll move on. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you so much. To your personal encounter. Tell us how it happened. Uh, well, um, again, as I've said, that this encounter of mine with Jesus comes around um, as a teenage young man mm. and um, caught up in all the wildlife. Mm. Um, coming out of a broken family, mm. I met Jesus um, in Catholic. Mm -hmm. And I say that because born as a Catholic, I was staying with my father. Mm. My mom was back in Uganda, mm -hmm. and therefore I was with my dad in Kenya. Are you half Ugandan? Yes, my oh, mom is a minore. Yeah. Ah. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So. Uh, staying with dad and um, with him alone and um, dad is a religious man I could say mm -hmm. he's a very pious man mm -hmm. let me say that so he oriented me to go to church so I went to church religiously as a Catholic mm -hmm. and um, along the way um, I felt that the Lord wanted me to get closer to him mm -hmm. it didn't start like church thing of in, of mm -hmm. getting close to God. Mm. It all started with what is the best life for me. Mm. My dad reared me with the movies and uh, novels. To pacify you. Yes. So he could give me money over the weekends even after church to go to a movie and once I've gone to a movie I come back then we share just like we seated with you mm. because we're two of us in the house. And I could tell dad about the movies and then, yeah, that was all. And uh, I also read novels, mm. much more controversial novels, especially between the U.S. and the U.S.S.R. Mm. So uh, it's, it's in this transition that, interestingly, I get to meet the Lord because at this time of watching movie, I began by desiring to be like one of the heroes in the movies that mm -hmm. I watched. And one of the things that um, seemed to have come the out... The movies were making... Yeah. They was that most of the heroes were, had, a, had, a, had a simple life. They were not into drugs. They were not into women. They were not into drinking. And I said, wait a minute. Probably you must have watched good movies. Yes. Uh, mostly I, I, I liked... Um, well, in fact, if, I, if you, you, you could have had... A, the movies I watched. My dad was a boxer, mm -hmm. so I enjoyed watching Rambo. So I was watching Rambo 1, Rambo 2, and I think I was in Rambo 4 when I got the conversion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I meet Jesus at this time because I realized even at that time that I couldn't make it to be like the people I was seeing in the movie who are heroes mm. because I was weak. I kept falling back. 
Mm. And that's when, when I went to church now, you know, as a Catholic, uh, there was a movement that was beginning in Catholicism then, that was around 1990, charismatic movement. Charismatic. Yeah. Uh. So they had a different thing as opposed to the rosary, the way of the cross that I was doing and still I found myself g falling back to the things I wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I joined the charismatic movement mm -hmm. that is in Nakuru, in one of the parishes called St. Joseph's, mm -hmm. that is in Race Track. So we go in Holy, uh, Holy, Coast, uh, Holy, Holy Ghost Parish somewhere in Shabab. Mm -hmm. So we go for a meeting and then the meeting turns out that people are being called to be saved in a Catholic church. Wow. And to something give their lives to yeah, Jesus. Yeah. And something hits me at that time mm. that it is real. Mm. And you know what was real? A peace that invaded me at that time. Amen. This is a young man of about twenty two years mm -hmm. and finding this relaxed moment. Mm. And I could not describe it. Mm. I couldn't find any way to say what it was. Mm. Now, in the meeting, everyone had different way of expressing what they were experiencing. Mm -hmm. Well, a week later, we had a discipleship kind of meeting and people were testifying. Grown-ups were testifying, God has blessed me with a new car, a new land. Mm -hmm. But the thing that for me remained was the peace I was having. Amen. I was so relaxed. You know, my friends whom we used Your to... Your anxiety mm -hmm. disappeared. Uh. Who used to be around me could tell me but that probably I'm just deceived. I said, you guys don't know what's going on. I'm just cool. Mm. If I use the language of the young people, mm. I'm just relaxed. Mm. Well, that for me was an encounter with Jesus. Amen. And that is what I kept guarding all the time, even... Probably when you come to ask more or want to know coming to be as an Adventist. So um, right there, mm -hmm. we'll take a break mm -hmm. and uh, then come back to hear the rest of it. Well, praise God. Thank praise you God. so much. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank Dear you. viewer, we'll now take a short break. You can hear it getting better. Uh, we'll take a, a short break and then we'll get back and listen to the rest of Pastor's testimony. Don't go away. And God bless you as you watch. Thank you for watching Hope Channel Kenya. Thank you for staying with us on testimony time and for those of you who've just joined us we are listening to pastor dr david odiambo's testimony um, of uh, his encounter with the lord jesus christ yes so pastor so now you have surrendered your life to the lord and you are feeling that a, a weight has been lifted lifted off of you yes if i use my own yes word. yes 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 mm -hmm. can you take us on well and um, i still wanted to find reason for this uh. and the way that i wanted to find reason for what i was going through mm. uh, was this new experience this new experience uh -huh. because i couldn't understand it for real Mm. I couldn't know what it is, and uh, that, that, that test, I believe that could be what Jesus tells Nicodemus, mm. that you will see the wind blow, mm. but you will not tell where it's coming yeah. from and where it's going. Yeah. That was the thing. Anyway, as seeking, as I sought to find reason for what I was experiencing, I began to read the Bible. My began first, to read the Bible. Yeah, I, oh, I used to depend on the priest telling me the text, mm. which I, I couldn't remember in most instances. The thing that really hooked me up most of the time were the rituals, the prayers, you mm. know. They really made me feel the presence, you know, going through that ritual, those, the, the, those even in the Mass or the Way of the Cross. But now something new was coming in. Mm. The people who had oriented me into the new experience had this Bible they were reading and quoting text from every 
end of the of, of, of it mm. so i purposed to get my own bible mm, amen so i bought my first bible amen and it was a big bible the wow. jerusalem bible amen i didn't have so much money then i think i was just a casual laborer but i spent my whole week's money to buy that jerusalem bible amen. my dad still has the bible in his house today and I began reading the Bible. I began reading the Bible. Mm. Uh, besides this, at this time, I have not stopped watching movie. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm still reading my novels. Mm. I used to read the novel because dad used to ask me to go and, and, and bring two, four novels from the National Library. And uh, these novels were, for those who read novels like Robert Ludlam, Frederick Forsmith, uh, much of the narrative in those novels was about America and USSR in conflict. Mm -hmm. So the spies that went on, uh, things like the born identity. So this is where now I'm making a transition to the Adventist church. Mm -hmm. Because as I continue going to the library to borrow my novels and reading them, I'm experiencing uh, a great time with the Lord Jesus. We are having overnight prayers. We are having fasting moments. We are preaching. That is the moment, well, I'll come to that uh, in a while, but let me first say this, that I'm beginning to find reason for why, what I'm experiencing. So I read... As you read the Bible. The Bible, mm -hmm. and I'm reading the novel. Mm. You see, the Lord's still coming in a very unique way. Mm. These novels, one day I go to the National Library to pick my usual novel. Mm. In, As you know, libraries have shelves and have books in particular places. Mm. So I returned the ones that I've, I'd read the previous weeks, two mm. weeks, mm. and I went to my shelf to look what is the next series. And lo and behold, there is a series here written, The Great Controversy. Now, with that background that I've given you mm. of the controversies between USA and USSR, mm. you would imagine that I was going to rush to pick up this novel this big book and in fact it was big and appealing mm. most of the books we i read were those novels i'm speaking about were voluminous mm. and therefore this book had the same size and the title was so captivating the great, the great controversy, controversy. Mm -hmm. at this time my thirst for god and christ has grown to an extent mm. that i've already reported to the in molo in akuru molo I've already gone to, uh, to become a priest. I've gone for orientation. Hmm. So we had gone for that orientation to become a priest at this particular at time. At the seminary. At the seminary. Hmm. So I'm contemplating becoming a priest. I didn't know that was not for it because I'm the firstborn. And I guess he probably didn't want me to, to join the priesthood. Hmm. But anyway, so I, me I get this great controversy novel. My life is now in that moment where I'm thinking I want to be a priest, and then I pick it up. And unusual of me, I didn't read. Like your novels have disappeared and there's this new one. This new one. The novels are there. Actually, I picked another one besides this. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the title, <laughs> mm. and then the size. Mm -hmm. So I pick it. Unusual of me, I didn't even read the preface, nor even the, 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 the writings on the back. You just carried it. Just carried it. Mm -hmm. That was unusual. Mm -hmm. Because probably if I would have read it and saw those maybe a religious thing, because as a Catholic I didn't read any other book except those written by the priest. Mm -hmm. So I would have said, okay, these are the crazy Protestants, and I would not have even touched it. But I carried it without reading the preface, and I mm -hmm. went home. Mm -hmm. When I reached home and I began to read it, this was not the usual novels I read. But the thing that may, uh, captured my curiosity was well, this novel, this book, is speaking ab against the church and preparing to give my life. To in, serve. Yeah, to serve. Talking about the Pope in the initial stages and say, wait a minute. I don't know up to this moment how I finished it, but I tell you, I finished that old edition of Great Controversy, big as it was, in four days. And I was dead, but I was not the same, because this novel began to disturb me. 
began you to, were seeing things yes that i was now asking questions that i had not asked at the time because you the, the things spoken about were familiar to you you were familiar to me they are the things i do every day i go for penance uh, you know for confession of sin before the priest and wait somebody's talking about this having been the indulgences that at one time in life people were persecuted because of them mm. i didn't understand it anyway i at this time now i'm not working in a textile uh, industry as a casual laborer now i'm working in a law firm i've done like three years in the law firm so i get this message of adventism and i begin to wonder now even if it is true how will i get a chance to to to, to observe the sabbath so one year goes by when i'm just in of decision mm. trying to make sense You're troubled. of everything that I've read mm. and I'm also seeking to read another series of this writer E.G. White now I didn't know that this is a woman uh, I'm not saying that with any mm. any any prejudice. <laughs> prejudice but I'm just saying that uh, well I didn't know who the person was because the, the initials were just E.G. and then White so I looked for it a year down the line, in the neighborhood, actually in the morning, I went just to ask something for my neighbor, and I find a book on the table. The first thing I saw was the author, E.G. White. I said, this is the book, because I went back to the library and ran some the library. There was no E.G. White book, any other E.G. White book. That was the only book. I even don't know how it ended up there. And then, so I find this book one year down the line, in my neighbor's house, on the table, just like that. And I see E.G. White, and I say, yeah, this is a book I've been I looking I know for. this author. I know this author. And uh, the title, again, is so captivating. The Desire of Ages. I said, what is this? Hmm. So I even forgot for a moment what I went to do in my neighbor's, and I started begging him if I could read that book. I later began, I later realized that this was a Cole Potter, because he told me, no, I can't let you read the book unless you buy it. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, you want me to buy a book? Uh, yeah, and you know how much? It was about, I think, 2,000 shillings. I couldn't imagine spending that much on the book. So I begged him vehemently, please let me read it. I'll read it in two days and bring it back. Hmm. Well, at last he gave in. He allowed me to read it exactly two days. <laughs> in that two days, I ran with it because I had already tested the writing of this lady, or the author. At that time, I don't know whether it's a lady, um, this author. And I read the book. The Desire of Ages. And it was indeed a Desire of Ages. Amen. The next thing that happened, I looked for the next Adventist church. And that's how I ended up in Nakuru West Church in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. And um, now at that moment, I was in a transition I came to church on Sabbath just to observe and to see what is it. And I was still trying to fight within me. What is it about the Sabbath? I, everything was strange. I'm coming from a church that is filled with pictures of Jesus. And I'm coming in this empty hall. Statues. Yes. Mm. It, 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 it didn't touch me. It felt The reverence. Mm. Yeah, I didn't feel that I was really in the presence of God. But the truth was too strong. So again, around six, six months, I'm in Adventism and I still go for Mass. But down the line, I decided, after reading now, I want to thank God for my dad. Because again, dad gave me the impetus to read. Because when I began to tell him, because now, when I was convicted, I decided to tell my employers that I think I want them to allow me to go to church on Sabbath. Mm. And they told me, all this while, two years you've been working on Sabbath, Saturday, what's, what has changed? Mm. Then I tried to explain to them. They were all, we were all like age men, though they were now the bosses. Uh, so they were wondering, in fact, one of them asked me, Odiambo, oh, you want to walk naked just because of a day? Mm -hmm. I told him, well, I think I will not. And I was with deep conviction that I was ready to let go of the job. Mm. When I told my dad at home what I was going through, 
he told me a statement. I had never done theology that time. I came to meet the statement later on when I'm doing theology. Mm. He told me, now, son, religion has become opium to you. <laughs> and I continued my pursuit for God. So the book, uh, mm, The Great Controversy, uh, gave you the Christian church history. Yes. It gave me and the Christian And the desire of ages give you Christ give afresh. Christ. Yes, 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 yes. That yes. desire yes, of ages. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. okay. So I, for the two aspects were filled in. I loved the church. Mm. I loved the Catholic church mm. where I was. Mm. It gave me the fear of God in me, mm -hmm. the reverence that I heard. Amen. But the conviction of the truth was too strong. Mm. And I remember the only thing that convinced me is when I read in the book of First John, uh, it should be somewhere in either chapter 1 or 2, where it says that uh, this is perfect love. Mm if you keep my commandments. Amen. So that was the thing that plugged me out of Catholicism. I loved Catholicism and I had learned reverence of God in that church. Mm. And I struggled to tear myself away from Catholicism. Mm. But I knew that the thing I had in me was how could I love God? So when I read that text, Show me your way. That the Lord said, Mm. If you love me, mm. keep my commandments. I said, this is it. Mm. So I had a reason. You wanted to know how you could love God. Yes, and that was all simple. Now the journey began there, mm. again with Dad. Now my bosses have given me one month, told me, well, let's try one month without you on Saturday. If we cannot be able to... Um, if you're not able to, to sustain the work, then we're sorry. We'll have to, you'll have to lose your job. Mm. But one month passed without anybody noticing. The thing that I came to realize that everybody in the, in the office seemed now not to come to work on Saturday oh. because of Yambo's not coming to work on Saturday. Wow. And uh, my journey began. But at home, I was having a teacher in Adventism. And this was not an Adventist pastor. This was my own Catholic dad mm. who was teaching me Adventism. And you know how he taught me about it? Mm -hmm. By poking me with questions which were intended to discredit my new conviction. Mm -hmm. He began, first of all, by asking me, you mean you now joining this church that one time in history deceived people that Jesus was coming? Mm. And I said, well, what is it? What is that? <laughs> so I went searching. And then I got the message of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. I read about it and mm -hmm. went back to explain. Down the line, Dad again asked me, so now you're keeping the commandments? I said, yes. So now you're not a sinner? <laughs> Mockingly. Yeah, yeah. So now you don't, you're, not, you're not a sinner? Well, that was, at, as a young person, I guess it confused me. Mm -hmm. But it sent me again into searching. Mm -hmm. And that's when again, I learned about the righteousness of God. The grace of the God. The grace of Amen. God. And I went back and told my dad about it. And I think that's how the discussion ended. But you see, he had propelled me fast enough. Mm. I couldn't have known about the sanctuary early in my faith mm. at that time. I couldn't have known about righteousness of God early at my time. And those became like the two things that propelled me in my Adventist growth. Mm. As an Adventist, I continued reading more about the sanctuary and I continued reading more about righteousness of God. I read people like Squira that early time and they blew up my, 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 my heart. I read a book also that also released me a lot. It was a book by Watchman Nee, mm. The Normal Christian Life. Mm. And I had answers for those big questions that God had given me, but I had also grown. Amen. And that's how the Lord placed me on a fast lane of my Christian life. And I began to study. And therefore, in my local church, I think within the first six months as a believer, I went to the remotest church in the sewage. If you've been to Nakuru, deep in the sewage, there was an Adventist church. That's where I began my walk. Wow. And there, because not many people were there, immediately they identified something was happening in me. I was a Sabbath school superintendent. Mm. 
and I was given responsibility. Yes, and I became a, a, a personal ministry leader. Wow! And uh, then at that time, I married my dear wife Amen. Janet. You know, people always mock me that probably it's because I wanted to marry Janet. Uh, she's Nyaboke. So people think that probably I became an Adventist because of this woman being a Kisi. You know, people have always identified Adventism with Kisi mm. or Luo. Mm. But I always tell the Janet came later on. Mm. And the reason after why you were after I have already converted and I had already joined Adventism. And yeah, maybe you saw her because of Christ in her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she, she, I realized she was going to the same church. I didn't even know which church she was going to. That time I didn't know about things of church mm. so much. I knew Catholicism, and now I knew my small church deep inside the sewage and uh, Kur West where I was baptized. I didn't know other churches, but she told me I go to church. She told me she goes to Nakuru Central Church. Mm. And we picked up. But talking about my conversion, mm. and uh, at that particular time, I'm talking fast track, became a personal ministry. After I married my wife, we went to stay in Kitty, so I changed residence. I joined another church in Kitty. Uh, and quickly, that we were just beginning the church, I became a church elder. And uh, we were there in Nakuru running the show with Pastor Njuguna. Joshua mm -hmm. is actually a mentor, I would say, and mm -hmm. Pastor Kimuyu. Mm -hmm. uh, they are men that I looked up to so much Amen. at that time because they were fiery preaching prophecy. And I was wondering, wait a minute, what are these guys talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm growing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I looked up so much into them, and I was growing. And that's how, in my growth, people started talking about me probably becoming a pastor. Mm. Maybe back in my experience of conversion, that piece... We have uh, about three minutes. Well, yeah, that piece, there's something significant there. That piece that I experienced mm -hmm. was, again, being... I was being forced to speak about it. Mm. Telling Testify. my friends... Yeah, telling my friends about it. I didn't have enough opportunity. I couldn't preach in the church, Catholic. We had... Uh, cell meetings in Catholic, they have cell meetings, Mita. Mm. Mm. So I began speaking to the old ladies in those Mita. But I crafted out my own church. Mm. You know which church I had? Mm. Nakuru General Hospital, Provincial Hospital. You went there every Wednesday religiously. Every evening. The Spirit of God in you was yes. pushing you to yes. testify of Every Wednesday Christ. evening after work, I crossed the graveyards into Nakuru General Hospital and just stood in the open rooms and began to tell the sick about this Jesus. Amen. You know, again, I told you that I'm born... And that gave you a lot of satisfaction. Yes. Hmm. I'm born a Ugandan. Mm. And I came to Kenya in 1979 with my dad. Mm. I had no experience of Swahili. Mm -hmm. And I had to speak to these people in the hospital. Mm. My sister, I don't know how. But I know that today, when I stand in local churches and speak Swahili, people think that I've written a paper in Swahili. Mm. I've never done any exam in Swahili. Mm. But I preach in Swahili today. Amen. That is another thing that I have to say. That was an encounter with God. Amen. How he gave me the tongue of mm. Swahili. Amen. You know, I had two things against me. One, I was born in Uganda. Swahili mm. was not a language I spoke. Mm. Two, as you would know, most Luos, Swahili is one mm. of those. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Mm. But the Lord gave me the ability to communicate. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God, Pastor, Amen. for this wonderful testimony. Amen. Yeah. Uh, so I know that there, uh, there's a viewer out there who who has been going to church and uh, uh, is wondering what's an encounter. What, what's this big deal? I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm this and that, or I'm a Baptist, or, mm -hmm. you know, whoever mm -hmm. the viewer is. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say to them as we close? Um, as I said, an encounter will always be very unique. Mm. And that means that there is something in your life, mm. dear viewer, that you probably are seeking for an answer. Mm. And you can find anywhere this answer. Mm. I want to tell you that this is where God comes in. Amen. As I said about my testimony, my peace was just that all the anxieties I had in my life 
seem to have been solved, even though practically they still remained. Mm. And this is why I say an encounter with God is where you come to find your fulfillment. Amen. You come to find an answer to your deep questions of life. Amen. That is for me an encounter with God. Amen. He gives you a peace, if I would take it for myself, in different places. The reason why sometimes these encounters are transitory for some people or they are temporal for some people because they have been placed on objects. Mm. On the things that mm. God gives them. Mm. Probably you are given a car, you'll you earned a happy marriage, you are blessed. Mm. But I want to tell you that I believe that an encounter is what God does in the depth of your life. Amen. The things you don't tell anyone, the things you know only you. And that as we wind up, uh, uh, it, uh, there's something very interesting that mm -hmm. I noticed when you were giving your testimony and also my experience, mm -hmm. that when the Lord appears to you, mm -hmm. He surrounds you. Right. He surrounds you. Many people, when they give their lives to the Lord, when you tell them to give their lives to the Lord, they wonder what they're going to do about that drinking, mm. about that girlfriend, about mm. that affair. Mm. But the Lord surrounds you, He sets you up, and He handles you. And even about the book uh, that you talked about, mm -hmm. you know, Watchman Nee, the, yes. the, the great controversy, you know, he, he will send you messages in, correct, in, in, correct, in, in correct, people, correct. in uh, books, books, particular books, circumstances. circumstances, and it takes care. And so, dear viewer, even as we, we wind up, we want to, uh, to pray, <laughs> and uh, this is all about you and the Lord. Amen. That it's all vain without you uh, surrendering your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The only the blood of Jesus Amen. washes away sin. Mm. And only the blood of Jesus is our hope. All the other things uh, only fit in the right perspective when mm. we have Jesus at the center. Mm. The keeping of the commandments of God, mm. which church you go to, mm. you know, it's all important only when you have Jesus mm. at the center. Without Christ, the commandments are nothing. He's right. the giver of the commandments. Right. He's the, uh, the, the, without Christ, the Sabbath is nothing. Mm. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. So may the Lord help you to make a decision today to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may have this experience. You see people testify of the experience with the Lord. David says, taste and, and see, see that the Lord, Lord is, is good. good. You Amen. have to taste Amen. for yourself to know that the Lord is good. You have to taste for yourself to be able to testify uh, of the goodness of the Lord. So let the Lord take over your life <laughs> and you will have a testimony when he fills you with his Holy Spirit. You will not need anyone to tell you to go and witness mm -mm. because you will be burning to witness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, there was a time I lived in Nakuru too some right, time right, right. and when I, when I met Christ there were people who used to preach on the street. Yes, yes. And every time I saw somebody preaching on the street, mm -hmm. my heart would mm -hmm. beat and mm. I would say, what am I doing working for mm -hmm. NSSF? Right, this is right. what I ought to do. Mm -hmm. I ought to be on the streets mm -hmm. talking about Jesus. Yes, it happens. It happens. So, mm -hmm. d dear viewer, mm -hmm. give your life to the Lord and now is the time for salvation. Mm -hmm. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden mm -hmm. your heart. You mm -hmm. do not know about tomorrow and Christ is coming soon. Mm -hmm. You, you we, we don't know about the next moment. Remember Dusit? Remember all these things that mm -hmm. happened? Today somebody has died in an accident. We don't know. Today people are dying sitting in their seats. Mm -hmm. Give your life to the Lord while there's yet time. Amen. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, please pray. We have three minutes for the prayer. Amen. But uh, do pray. Let's pray for the young people. Right. Mm -hmm. and children mm -hmm. within the, that time. Mm -hmm. mm. Blessed Lord God of heaven, 
it's all about you. Mm. And even the moment, Lord, we have spoken, it's thou, Lord Jesus, that we have decided that you be lifted I. Mm. For thou only, O oh God, knew us even before we came to you. Mm. The Bible says that, the, that God chose us in you, Christ, mm. even before the foundation of the world. Mm. And you purpose to bring us in fellowship with you Mm. and adopt us to be called children of God. Mm. And that indeed is what we are. Mm. Father, the moment we have, uh, we have shared this day, we want to believe that someone out there who probably is going through a moment of indecision, anxious, or not knowing anything that you could do with his life. Mm. Lord, I want to pray that thou, Lord, who comes to us even before we know, mm. as the Bible says, that while we were yet still sinners, you loved us and you saved us in Christ Jesus. Mm. I want to pray, Father, that in your sovereignty, that you will reach out to one. Amen. That you will move in their life in your own ways mm. and draw them closer to you and make them respond Amen. to the great love that you have revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Mm. I want to pray, Father, this day for the generation that is coming up. You say that you are seeking for a godly seed mm. in the lives of those who fear you. And I know that, Lord, the generation of young people of these times mm. are for you. You say that just before the coming of the Lord Jesus, mm. that you will turn the hearts of the children to their parents, the daughters to their mothers and the sons to their fathers just before the day of the Lord. Father, I pray that this could be true for the young generation, for our children, mm. and for every young person today. Their days are so evil. Many are walking in uncertainty. Many are walking in unemployment. Mm. Many are trapped by the enemy, are taken captive, mm. serving the enemy in different manner. But Father, I want to pray that in Jesus' holy name, it may please you that the power of the Holy Spirit mm. will draw their minds to you. Every thought and every imagination in the minds of the young people, mm. Father, I pray that it will be taken captive in Jesus' name Amen. and be brought to the obedience of the O oh God, Lord Amen. Almighty. I pray for the young people that are employed, mm. that have nothing to do. Mm. Father, I pray that again by your Spirit, you will open up ways that are thousands that the Bible says that you have, mm. that they may find a way in which, Lord, to fulfill themselves, to be deployed, mm. if not employed. Amen. Deploy them in different ways that you know, Father. Mm. I want to pray that, Lord, you give them favor mm. in different places for those who are already seeking for jobs. Mm. I want to pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that also those who are already trapped Mm. Some, I know, Lord, are in the trap of drags. Mm. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that you may grant them liberty. Deliver them, oh Lord, in God. Jesus' name, them. break the chains of evil them, that have taken them captive, O oh God, Spirit. that these children may respond to you mm. and may find peace. Mm. Father, I want to pray for families that are struggling mm. in their marriages. Mm. The days are evil. The day say, the Bible says that our days shall be such that men will be lovers of themselves. Mm. Father, I pray that where this spirit is manifest in the marriages, subdue it in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Grant that your people may respond to each other freely as they stay together, Amen. that they may be able to endure in their marriages. Mm. Father, in Jesus' name, I also want to pray of this hour mm. for your people who love you, mm. those who love you, and keep your commandments. Mm. Father, may you bless them as the days draw nigh that their testimony will remain true mm. of loving Jesus and keeping his commandments that the world may know and be drawn to you people from every tribe, mm. every nation, and people from every tongue mm. that we may see the great multitude of those who will come through the tribulation that are in this world. Mm. Father, we thank you for this time. And we believe that you'll continue to bless us because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank, Thank you, my sister so Edwina. Making our it was time my pleasure coming. being around testifying God what bless God you can you do. To serve him. Amen, amen. Amen. Dear viewer, uh, thank you very much for staying with us and watching Hope Channel Kenya. Thank you for watching Testimony Time. Until next time, this is your presenter, Edwina Ombado, your sister in the Lord. God bless you.